The Road to Emmaus. On the road, yet feeling lost. We were hoping, they say. Hearts are opened in the traveler's teaching. Eyes are opened in the breaking of the bread. In this Easter reading from the Gospel of Luke, we hear an account of a journey, a disillusioned journey backward, back home, rather than forward, beyond death, beyond the tomb, and toward new life in the risen Christ. This story also is about a journey inward, about movement within the interior life, within our interior life, as followers of Jesus. Every one of us knows the road to Emmaus. Emmaus is a small town, and we're pretty much small town people. So Emmaus is home. The road is our path outward to larger spaces, to freedom, to new experiences, to a larger life. The road also is our path back home, to rest and rejuvenate, our place to sleep and even to dream. Home is our place to reflect and grow. Home also can be our hiding place. So let's think back on Luke's story. On that morning, following all these things that shook us to our core, we knew we had to leave Jerusalem, our spiritual center, which was now no center at all. Shattered is the word that describes us. The one we loved, the one who led us, is now dead, buried. We were hoping, but apparently we were wrong. When we saw the tomb sealed with stone, we finally understood, it's over. Clearly, we grieve. Grief is a theme of Holy Week. Grief also is a theme of the Easter season. Why grief? Because Jesus' total nonviolent self-offering in the cause of costly love shows us what awaits us his followers, maybe not through crucifixion, but surely through setting our hearts, as Jesus set his, firm in the intention of total, nonviolent self-offering in the cause of costly love. There's a dying here, even amid the alleluias. Death is our necessary passage to new life. Grief reminds us that our love for what is dying is worthy love. Grief is a visitation of love. So let's take a closer look. The road, the path, the trail speaks to your uniquely Christ-centered interior life, which still has much to teach you as the early disciples learned. In honor of Earth Day, as well as Easter, and because I love to hike, I'll share with you a few trail metaphors for the interior journey, the path, the river, switchbacks, bridges, and narrow passages, and living, dying, and birthing new life. So what can the road to Emmaus teach us disciples today? First, path is metaphor for your interior life. Some might call it the spiritual life, a word that tends to disembody us. Hiking the trail, reading the trail, is all about being in your body, your physical senses fully alive, and bringing you rich and vital information about the world you touch. The path has a beginning, a middle and an end. Your life has the same, a beginning, a middle, and an end. A road well taken, a path well trod, a hike well done, a life honestly lived 
gives you a sense of satisfaction, a sense of meaning and worthy contribution. The path is smooth until it's not. Tree roots and rocks embedded in the path are part of the metaphor of your life. Tree roots and rocks hidden in shade seem to rise up an inch just to make sure I'm paying attention. And if I'm not, they bring me back to the here and now. A path without tree roots would be a forest without trees. A life without obstacles is no life at all. I am not entitled to a life free of obstacles. So you can ask yourself, what tree roots or rocks, what situations or experiences have snapped me back to the here and now? How have these situations caused me to pay attention differently? What story comes to mind? Second, river also is metaphor for your interior life. Rivers follow the path of least resistance, as water always does. Like the trail I hike, like my own life, the path of the river has a beginning, a middle, and an end. My beloved Mackenzie River bubbles up from a sulfur spring in a little cove of clear lake high in the Oregon Cascades. The river progresses from this little spring, at one point running underground, then surfacing again, at sometimes racing rapids, sometimes branching into meandering channels. Indigenous peoples understand, as our own forebears understood, water is life. Water, like sacred fire, like sacred oil, like sacred bread and wine, is sacred, a portal into life, into the mystery we call God. Water hydrates, it cleanses, enables growth. The holy man, Francis of Assisi, sings in his canticle of creation, All praise be yours, my Lord, through sister water, so useful, humble, precious, and pure. Again, pause to ask yourself, when has my interior life felt most hydrated? When has it felt dry as a desert? What story comes to mind? Third, Switchbacks, bridges, and narrow passages are rich metaphors for the Christ-centered interior life. I know I'm on a steep climb when I come to the switchbacks, the tight zigzags that ease the way uphill. Whether I'm going up or coming down, I pay fierce attention to the trail, walk intentionally and with faith. The Christ-centered interior life is the place of commitment to what will stretch you, challenge you, and guide you across thresholds of endurance beyond what you had imagined. Bridges require my full attention, narrow split log bridges which tilt slightly toward the single handrail where I feel the give and take tremor as I carefully make my way across. Bridges hold a significant place in the interior life. They appear when we need them, spans which are thoughtfully crafted by someone who has walked the path before us, like Jesus, from here to there. Bridges carry us over impassable terrain, over perilous water, over thin air, enabling us to achieve what otherwise would be impossible. Bridges, interiorly, are arcs of possibility, nonviolent arcs of peace in an often heartless and traumatized world. 
and every forest trail has its narrow passages. Again, metaphor for the interior life. Barely more than a foot's width wide. Treacherous, impossible passages. This is exactly where those early disciples found themselves. Like them, you've come too far to turn back now. And you dare not look back, nor too far ahead, lest you lose all sense of balance. You know you have it in you to move forward, finding possibility and mercy in each small, careful step. So you can ask yourself, when in my interior life have I felt stretched, challenged, and somehow guided across thresholds of unknowing beyond what I had imagined? What stories come to mind? And fourth, living, dying, and birthing new life are all rich metaphors for the interior life. At the end of the Emmaus story comes an encounter, unimagined communion with the one who has entered into elsewhere, yet is very much here. The disheartened disciples are on the path of their interior life, in the painful place of living yet dying, even while birthing new life. This place of incomprehension is exactly where Jesus meets them. In this unexpected supper table encounter, they may have thought they were birthing new hope for their lives. Little did they know they were birthing new church. Living, we discover, is part of the larger environment of dying. And dying is part of the larger environment of living new life, holding space for the past, even as we follow the risen Christ into our future. Life carries us this way whether we know it or not. We can trust life just as we can trust the road, the path, the trail, as Jesus did. Like him, we've trusted the trail all along, which is how we have arrived at the miracle of today. Amen. And Alleluia.